I said faith powerful. Faith gets us healed. Faith gets us delivered. Faith causes us to be blessed. Faith causes us to go from being the tail to being what? The head. Not a job, faith. James chapter 2, verse number 20. Hmm, I don't know how folk quite took this when he wrote this. But notice what he said. He said, but do you want to know, oh foolish man or woman, that faith without works is dead? But do you want to know or to understand, O oh foolish one, that faith without works is dead? If a person says that they have faith, but they don't have works, their faith is dead. And if you don't understand that, you are foolish. But, but, but if I'm sitting in the church, having been ordained to live by faith, but I don't understand faith, there's going to be some lacking taking place in my life that wouldn't have to exist if I would live by faith or if I would just trust God. When there are no works accompanied by faith or what we say we believe, then faith is, again, destitute of force or power. Now, I just told you faith is a powerful thing because faith has the power to change things. But if there are no works accompanied with faith, then my faith is going to be inactive or unprofitable. And I don't want to set up in God's house being taught to live by something that's powerful, yet in my life it's not active. It's not working. It's not forceful. It's not powerful. One person will speak and things will come to pass. Another person will speak the same thing and nothing happens. One person's faith is powerful. Another person's faith is inactive. And that's not the will of God. Again, faith without works is dead. What is works? Works is corresponding actions. Faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding actions. And what is corresponding action? It is actions that are caused or connected to what one believes. Corresponding actions is actions that are caused or connected to what one believes. And so I can say all day that I believe something, but if I don't have actions that are connected or caused by what I believe, then I really am not believing the way that I need to believe. See, it, it, it's more than just saying I believe. Because when you truly believe, there are going to be actions or uh, evidence of your belief. In other words, faith is not just talk. But for a lot of people, faith is just talk. They say things, but they don't really believe what they say. They'll speak to the mountain, but they don't really believe the mountain can be moved. Because if God says speak to the mountain and believe that the mountain is going to be removed and the mountain represents something big or something that's blocking your path and he says to you speak to the mountain that it be removed and then he says and keep walking or moving forward expecting the mountain to get out of your way if you speak to the mountain but you never move you don't really have the type faith that you need 
because you're saying the right thing, but there's no works that suggest you believe that if you move, the mountain has got to go. And a lot of folks say the right thing, but then when you look for corresponding actions that back up what they say they believe, it's not there. It's not there. And Jane wants the church to understand that type of faith without works is dead. Are y'all with me tonight? I don't want to confuse you because the subject is too important for you to get confused tonight. Look at it from a natural standpoint. For those of us that drove here tonight. You will tell a person in a minute that you believe. That the way you're going to get home is getting in your car, cranking it up, putting it in reverse drive or what have you, and going on home. How many believe that tonight? That after the Bible study, that's what's going to take place. You're going to get in the car that brought you here, and that same car is going to take you back home. How many believe that? Okay. But now, if you don't operate or have works, for what you say you believe, you can sit in this sanctuary all night with a car out there that's got gas, keys are in your possession, but until you get up and move or do something in line with what you believe, sitting there believing it alone won't get you home. Ooh, and, and God has some promises that he deems to be home. I'm trying to get you home. I didn't save you for you to stay broke. I sent you through something, but you were only visiting that place. If you will live by faith, not by sight, I'll get you back home or get you to where you need to be. Oh, you ought to shout to somebody, faith is powerful. I said faith powerful. Faith gets us healed. Faith gets us delivered. Faith causes us to be blessed. Faith causes us to go from being the tail to being what? The head. Not a job, faith. Not a raise faith. Do you see how powerful faith is? But without works or obedience, faith being powerful is rendered dead. Why? Because I'm not acting on what I say I believe. And you'll be surprised, folks, that will say things like, I know giving will change your living. But they're not giving. They're not acting on what they say they believe. Therefore, increase is not coming. Because he said in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be what? Giving. Now, you can believe it, but if you don't give, you won't get the good, the press, the shaking, nor the running, but you can talk about the good, the press, the shaking, and the running. You just won't get it. Until you put your faith in action. Oh, I'm telling you, something is going to happen when folk put their faith in action. Go from talking to doing. Go from quoting the word to doing the word. But if I'm operating in dead faith or I don't understand faith, I'll miss my better. Listen, I'll miss better not because that's what God wants, but my faith does not accompany works. If we would act on what we say, some of you know your lives will be different. If you really believe the things you said. What thing, Pastor? Things like with God, all 
all things are what? Possible. Do you act on that? Do, do you trust God to the point to where that's what your actions say? They're lining up, letting folk know who know you that I believe with God, all things are possible. That means you can get turned down, but you don't cry. You don't cry about the turn down. You don't get depressed about the turn down. You get up, leave the place the same way you came happy, knowing it will happen. Whoa! But if you start crying, when a man says no, then you don't really believe that with God all things are possible. Because if you did, you would allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as you're leaving one car lot and say, go to the car lot two, two dealerships down and expect something to happen. Now, if you get in your car and go home, your faith is what? Dead. But if you have the audacity to really act upon with God, all things are possible. You go to the third dealership, down from the dealership that denied you. You take your 526 credit score to that dealership expecting to get your heart desire. Why? Because you believe with God. Woo, how many really live that right there? How many really live saying with God? All things are possible. If you do, you are not crying over what's in your checking or your savings. You are not limiting God's ability to move for you. If you live this way, you are not just governing, governing how you live based only on the paycheck from your job. I just gave you scripture. You don't need no more scripture. With God, all things are what? That means God has more ways than just our job to get us paid. I wonder who believed that. By his stripes, we are what? Healed. Now you say that, but run to the medicine cabinet before you pray. And the scripture did not say, by Advil, are you healed? By Tylenol, are you made better? We quote it, but then we don't even pray or acknowledge God. There are no corresponding actions. And sometimes, like it or not, we set up in the church thinking that God is going to do everything and we don't have to do nothing. 